you can see I even have the t-shirt. Oh. Uh, oh, yes. Hi, everybody. Hi, Wotre. Very nice t-shirt. Really okay. appropriate. Another Got Academy. Harry Potter video. Another science video. You're a science guy. You're a geneticist. I know a bit about genetics. <laughs> you're a never you're supposed to say I'm a never never evolutionary biologist you're supposed to be a bit missed okay. about I'm it so, sorry uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm a biologist and as a biologist you have to know a bit of uh, genetics uh, enough to bluff my way through this video oh let's so we'll bluff just, our way yeah, through yeah. We're gonna come be fine. a bit closer a bit closer so we're gonna talk I hope I didn't screw up your focus over here <laughs> <laughs> you crossed the line here, I like it. <laughs> Keep going. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the genetics of Harry Potter. Mostly when we talk about the genetics the, the genetics of Game of Thrones or Harry Potter. We are talking about what makes a wizard. How do wizards come to be? So let's say what's called pure blood wizards. They have both parenting wizards, that's very easy. There's some wizards, like the Malfoy family, who think they're better than everyone else because they're what people call pure blood. So the ethnosay is an ideal that it would be a state for all people of the white race. It would be our homeland. It would be our safe space. That's horrible. <laughs> because keep we saying, are the genius that drives it. Thing. It's disgusting. But a lot, of, a lot of traits are not just one gene. So we don't know yet. We're going to discover as we go along what kind of genes could make a person magical. So we have to kind of uh, uh, itemize, okay, what are the different scenarios? Okay, so there's <laughs> pure blood, mm -hmm. both parents are magic, and you're magic. But that doesn't necessarily have to happen. Does right, it doesn't have to happen. But before we do that, let's talk about, let's say one of your parents is magical, wizardry, witchy, yeah. the other is a muggle then most of the cases that we know of from the story, the child is magical. <laughs> so that would hint that it's a dominant gene. That would be a reasonable thing to conclude. But as yeah. you said, if both parents are magical and then the child is not magical, what we call a squib, yeah. then it can't be a dominant gene. It has to be something else. Uh, Unless you're like a mutated uh, thing or no, a quarter, so right? Yeah, so then a quarter could still be squibs. Okay. But that's not the case. As far as we know, a quarter of the children who are born from uh, magical parents are not squibs. It's very rare. Actually, what, what in, in the whole story, what's probably the most <laughs> instructive about the genetics is that sometimes a child has magic, even though the direct parents don't. Yeah, so mudbloods tell us that actually magic is not really a single gene thing. It's like a bunch of things that have to come together. Like the, all the, the pieces of the puzzle could be falling into place, even though this hasn't really manifested in a lot of generations, but just it so happens that through different lineages, different pieces have been passed on and they come together okay. and all of a sudden, boom, magic. And do we have like, so give, give us a, a, a real world example of a combination of genes that you don't have any, anybody in your family that has this specific trait or ability, but then boom, that person has something. So, so we're, we're talking about much more complex yeah, traits. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah. right. So up till now we were talking about kind of simple things like the kind of genetics where, okay, if you don't have a certain enzyme, you don't like the taste of fresh coriander or you don't taste bitterness in grapefruits or like something very simple, right? These are simple, like you have some that's enzyme. Or you don't, yeah, that's genetic. Or like um, lactose tolerance, I guess, is the okay. mutant effect. So those are very simple things, but there's, of course, also very complex traits with okay. some more, you know, for example, but also like abilities like sports abilities or being able to play chess or something like that right that is not just it's also not just one one trait like right to be to be, to be able to play chess you have to uh, to be to, to be really really good at chess yeah. have to have a really good memory 
and visualization and also I guess be able to anticipate moves before the, this is just like a yeah. wide array of abilities yeah. mm. the ability to do magic uh, in the Harry Potter world could be in multiple ways I don't expect many of you to appreciate the subtle science and exact art that is potion making however for those select few who possess the predisposition it's like okay you're good with potions or right. you're good with defense against the dark arts or whatever right expecto patronum and just like you know a, a good football player can be good in multiple ways they yes. just technically very good or very good insight in right. the in the game right. or you know very strong uh, head game right or a <laughs> or glue guy whatever that whatever. gets everybody together okay yeah, yeah basketball the same way yeah but okay so one thing that i find that is interesting in harry potter in term of your genetic uh, makeup of the of the magical people is that you have a very clear ceiling from very very early on so in sports you have like scouts and people pour millions of dollars to try to see if that player like in the nba draft you should draft him first or second or third so, uh, you have like endless examples of busts or people that or players that people uh, think w didn't think would be good and they dropped to whatever to the fifth to the 15th pick the 30th pick the 60th pick but here very early on you know what you're sealing and no matter how hard you work Harry Potter he could work harder than anybody he would never be as good as Dumbledore he would never Dumbledore looks at him studies him a little bit then he knows huh he can be good at this okay that's it that's kind of unlike I would say sports you can never know who will be really really good and it has like more things into it I guess like uh, it's more emotional, like emotional stability and situational, your coach, your teammates. Maybe it's well, more like running. Well, yeah, so that, yeah, exactly. Like it, it depends on what dimension you look at and what sport. Uh, yeah, something like uh, running or so, okay, that which probably has to do with blood oxygenation or something like that, like uh, endurance or speed or that's kind of simpler. Right. And there's probably a more a harder ceiling right. to it right then a higher floor also if you uh, yeah. if you train hard you work hard all those yeah. things yeah ah okay another thing so we're talking about mud bloods that are considered uh, by some as uh, impure bastards there's actually no advantage to being a, a wizard or a witch born of muggle born parents one muggle one uh, like half bloods or mud bloods or pure bloods like Hermione, she's the best of her class, and she's mudblood. Yeah. And uh, Malfoy and the Slytherins, who are all pure bloods, some of them are good, they're good in potions, but they're not just like way better than everybody else. Yeah. So what, does that inform you of anything of the genetic makeup? Like once you got it, you got it, and that's it. So when we talk about heritability, mm -hmm. uh, like the concept of heritability in biology is basically just how much does a child resemble the parents and okay. of course there's a genetic component to it but there's also an environmental component to it i live in the netherlands my parents are tall i'm tall maybe okay. there's a genetic aspect to it but right. maybe there's also an envi environmental aspect to it right. right with these sort of special skills like sports or for example there have been these families that are like the bach family the composers okay. okay so maybe there's a genetic component to being able to compose music probably. but it's probably also just it's a musical environment so they right. they go into music and probably right. to some aspect of that's also the case with like okay uh, Johan Cruyff the football player okay. his son has a son Jordi Cruyff who is also a rather good football player but that's almost inevitable because he grew up in such a football household. Yeah. And the same with like chess, families, other, other sports. Okay, so there's this really great quote, uh, Jacques Brel, the Belgian... Uh, 
here, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Yeah. Jacques Brel. I think, I think you can see maybe that quote here. Let me see. Oeuvre integrale. Oeuvre integrale. I don't know if it's here. Let's see if the quote is here. He says, let me say it first in French. Le talent, c'est avoir l'envie de faire quelque chose. Mm -hmm. Talent is having the will and the motivation to do something. Mm -hmm. If you really want to invest your time doing dancing, to dance, that means you're talented in dance. Right, right. The, the, uh, right. the, the concept of talent is actually a bit demeaning because it's not really innate. It's more just a conviction to pursue it. Right. And right. you know, I had this, uh, I used to draw like comic books and stuff, like from the age of eight to the age of 18, like almost every single day. When I started, I started with a friend who's now actually a rapper and a uh, famous rapper in Israel and uh, uh, even famouser uh, rap producer, Ori Shochat. Boom. Hey. And he was very talented at uh, drawing. And I used to draw like shit, but I used to just enjoy drawing with him. And we used to draw, draw, draw. After three, four, five years, I drew better than him. He stayed the same. And I just got better and better, but I still felt like he had the talent and I didn't have the talent because I just worked hard at it because I enjoyed it, right? Not Yeah, so but, but maybe that's that's probably what talent often is. So you wanna you wanna go into the the genetics and politics? Sure. Like the blood, so obviously in Harry Potter the blood is very very important and it has been important in human history for a long time. The king's blood the blue blood, the royal blood, your own blood, you, to whom you inherit your stuff. Aryan blood. Aryan blood. And it seems that uh, every ethnicity, when it has like a hold on power, suddenly the blood becomes important. We've seen in, uh, in politics that bloodlines and the purity of the bloodline can be sort of magnified and made very important. Yes. And oftentimes, the people that most obsess about it are actually the people who sort of low-key themselves are on the margins. For example? For example, Hitler being in Austria. Start off, off with Hitler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but also up. like, so Voldemort was yeah. mixed also, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's not pure blood. Yeah. And Stalin was Georgian. Yeah, Hitler was Austrian and then Napoleon right, was Corsican and now I was just, just came into my head. Bibi, so Bibi is Jewish, okay. Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel. But maybe he also has it in some way that he lived like most of his uh, formative years abroad sure, in the US. Oh, he yeah. became, became Benjamin Thai. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, no, I'm Jewish, I'm Jewish, I'm Israeli as everybody. No, you're not. You lived half of your life over there. That's fine. I don't care, but relax. Yeah. Just relax. Yeah, having something to prove. When you become like racist towards like people who have impure blood, then mixing is frowned upon, right? Like mixing with the races, mixing uh, the pure bloods and the impure bloods. Yeah, yeah. I heard this week that when a Jew and a non-Jew have sex, it's as bad as Auschwitz. Yes, that is true. That is true. The, judge, the justice minister said that uh, mixing uh, out, like diluting uh, the Jewness is like a second uh, Holocaust. And uh, people made fun of him. What I think people uh, should have said is that he's a Holocaust denier and an anti Semite. What about our podcast? You want to talk about our podcast? Oh, we're making an awesome podcast. We are making an awesome, awesome podcast. You check it out. It's called. The Got Academy podcast. Yeah, it's a really, really cool name. Uh, yeah, and so, so there's a bunch of different types of episodes, mm -hmm. um, and the the types of episodes that we do together the most is this idea that uh, we we look at a bunch of movies and we deconstruct them either about the science that they present or the history. Mm -hmm. But there's also other types of podcasts. Okay, well, okay, but let's stick around with, uh, with these a little bit. So you're a scientist, and so through movies that are popular, and we all, we all have seen most of them, we can learn about the science, and we can also learn 
about the scientific views at the time of the making of the movie, which is yeah. kind of cool, I think. And the societal views. And the societal views about science and in general. Yeah. And, the, and the, the history part, with the history in movies, first of all, we can learn about the history, if it's ancient Rome, ancient Greece, whatever. Yeah. Also learn about how they viewed history, th this part of history, when they made this movie. Yes. Why did they want to make uh, a ton of movies about Rome and ancient Greece at this period? Uh, it's used as a times. tool often, it's like a political or rhetorical tool. Yeah, yeah, that says a lot about the present time when it was made. And also we can see the differences between that, that time and our time to learn how much has changed. So there's like a four layered uh, cake, cake here, yeah. which I think is very cool. Yeah. And, well, we, and uh, what's nice about it is also that we can really more take our time like the, yeah. the podcasts are coming in a little bit less than an hour but let's say a, an hour or so so we can really yeah. dive in much more deeply than in these videos right right videos you have to keep them popping keep them popping so the links are in the description so click the links to follow our podcast and check out all kinds of conversations over there and do you want to say anything else uh, we have a Twitter. We have a also his Twitter, our Twitter, and our Twitter is also kind of a little bit his Twitter too. <laughs> it's a all, all, the good, all the good tweets are, <laughs> kind of, you know, good tweets. Just here is a new podcast video tweet. This is basically <laughs> no, no. Sometimes no, 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 no. Okay. So yeah. thank you everybody for watching. Thank you, Rutger. Boom. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. So if you've been enjoying God Academy videos for a long time, you're gonna love the God Academy podcast. Yes, we have a podcast now. You can check it out on iTunes, on Spotify, on Stitcher, the God Academy podcast. Because it's in podcast form, the conversations can be longer, we can go deeper. We have new collaborators. It's all super, super exciting. So we're not just a YouTube channel anymore. Now, if you content, check it out. Got Academy Podcast.